Look on your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, all men. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call you Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he, would, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out of the lake, was battling with a heavy sea, for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night he went towards them, walking on the lake, and when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I, do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, he said, if it is you, Tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and he began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and 
and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story about a man who, while out rock climbing, he lost his footing and he found himself, himself desperately holding on to a protruding branch. In his desperation, he cried out to God for help. To his amazement, God answered him and said, Do you believe in me? I do, I do, replied the man, without a shadow of doubt. But God repeated, his request, do you really, really believe in me? To which the desperate man cried out, yes, yes, there's nothing more certain. Okay, God said, let's go of the branch. To which the man screamed, you can't be serious. Is there anyone else up there? Now, you and I know that people can be plagued by all sorts of fears, whether real or imaginary. They say that the words, do not be afraid, occurs 365 times in the Bible, one for every day of the week, of the year, I mean. Medics tell us that anxiety and stress lowers our immune system so we become more susceptible to bodily diseases, even COVID-19. It also means we struggle to get close to anybody in our lives. A Moorish proverb puts it like this, He who fears someone or some situation gives it power over them. Now, the positive side of fear, however, is that it prevents us from doing reckless things and endangering our lives. They say that fools rush in where angels fear to tread. But there is, I think, a more insidious fear, which means we lack the nerve to really take control of our lives and be our own person. Inadvertently, we let other people move in and take over our lives. I've just been reading this week that people who are victims of modern slavery may not be fully aware that they are being controlled, and that's the problem. The same could be happening in all our day-to-day -day relationships. It happens in marriage more than you think. One of the danger signs is that we're always guarded in what we say and we're wary of receiving a hostile retort. We dare do things differently. We're scared of stepping out of line, Stay scared that we don't get the nod of approval. Nowadays, we can easily even be muzzled by political correctness. We become like the man in the Gospel who, when he had received the one talent out of fear, he went out and hid that talent in the ground. As in the case of Peter, Jesus will sometimes invite us to step onto the choppy waters to prove that we have faith in him. But we must keep our eyes fixed on him or else we might end up like St. Peter in deep trouble in difficulty. Jesus said to Peter when he began to sink, Oh man of little faith, why did you doubt? But even in our anxious moments, his outstretched hand is there to rescue us, but do we resolutely reach out and grab his hand, or do we let the situation get the better of us and sink? Jesus came to save us from anything which obstructs, obstructs our growth as persons. Fear and anxiety is one of those things. The evil one aims to keep us bound and controlled so that we never grow into the person that God
God wants us to be. But like Peter, Jesus beckons us to walk on the water with him and to enjoy the freedom of a child of God. Thank you for listening. God bless you. We pray to the Father in the midst of our needs that God may bring all Christians together in unity and faith. Lord, hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis and Bishop Ralph, and all those who hold positions of authority in the Church, may they be the inspiring leaders of God's people. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you have transformed them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with a living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zion in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world.
you start public masses tomorrow, so there's mass at 9.30 and 6 p.m. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.